Yeah. Never trust yeah. the fart when you're drunk. The Woody Show. We are The Woody Show, and that right there is our in-studio guest. He is Kevin Smith. Hey! Hello, everybody. The Silent Bob of Jay and Silent Bob. He is also the director of uh, great films like Dogma yep, yep. and Clerks. I love Dogma. I know we've talked about that before. Thank you. But uh, it's, the- uh, it's the one that, like, uh, people. somebody said the other day, they're like, Man, you were firing on every cylinder on that movie. I was like, thanks. They go, what happened after that? <laughs> I was like, I guess that was the highlight. The peak, if you will. Well, no, the zenith. I mean, didn't, you, uh, didn't you protest your own movie? I did. Like when that came out? I did. I went out and, uh, I, you know, the internet was in its nascent form, so it's, it wasn't readily available. But yeah. there's a clip out there. You can find it on YouTube. Um, I, I heard that they were doing a protest at the movie theater by my house. And they were predicting 5,000 people. And I'm like, if 5,000 people show up, that's in my entire town. Right. So I'm like, I'm definitely going to this. I'd say people recognize that it's <laughs> yeah, you. No doubt. Protest, but yeah. I, I went, 15 people, none of them recognized me, including Sweet. the local news who came to interview me, interview everybody. And they oh, saw wow. me and they were like, are you him? And I'm like, <laughs> of Jesus? Because I was pointing to the cross. That somebody yeah. was holding. I was like, I ain't him. And they said, are you the director? I said, no. I said, but I'm against this movie. And they're like, do you want to talk about it? I said, okay. Sure do. And I talked yeah. about what it name on did camera. You give? I gave Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally standing right next to me. Uh, my mom later on that so night funny. was like, Tiger, there's a boy who looks just like you, has Brian's name somewhere in this yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Well, Jay and Silent Bob are back. It's the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. There's been a lot of people talking about it, very excited about it. I know uh, you've already filmed it. You went to New Orleans to film it, where we are on the air in New yeah. Orleans on Alt 92.3. New Orleans 3. was so great to us. And I didn't want to go down, not because I'm like, oh, ew, I don't like New New Orleans, but I didn't want to shoot outside of like last time we shot the movie in Los Angeles with three days in New Jersey at the end. So I was looking for the same thing because this movie literally is the same movie all over again. Right. right? But uh, budget, but it's a different world. When I made Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, I was literally probably at the height of my cinematic powers following up Dogma. And like, what mm. genius film do you want to do Never next? Had. And I took a sharp left turn <laughs> and did Jane Silent Bob Strike Back instead. So years later, you know, like it's 18 years since that movie. Um, we were not, we weren't going to get the same money to do it, but we did get a pretty good budget for it, 10 million bucks, but we couldn't shoot it here, um, and make that money last, um, or get a rebate of any kind because most of the studios suck up the big rebates here in Los Angeles. So New Orleans had a great tax incentive. Yeah. And so they're like, we're going there. And I remember being like, and, and, and I fought it all the way, even while we were in New Orleans, they wanted to shoot the opening of the movie, which takes place at quick stop, which is in New Jersey. They wanted to shoot it in New Orleans. I was like, you're out of your mind. So yeah. said, you cannot duplicate that building. Yeah. Forgetting mm-hmm. that I work in the movie business where they'll take you to space. Right. Look at uh, Newton's yeah, powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can literally do anything in the yeah, movie business. Yeah. I'm like, you can't duplicate a ugly concrete block in New Jersey. It's impossible. <laughs> and they took me to a building looked almost exactly like it where I was like, wow, man, you know what? I guess this could work. And they're like, we're not done. Then they skinned it. So I got there the day of the shoot. And you can see online, there's a video on my YouTube channel. Um, I broke down crying because it looked like the real thing. And I was like, you know, you could fool a lot of people, but like, this is the beginning of my whole entire life. Like, this is the building Mm -hmm. that gave me everything. And you guys built it in New Orleans. The crew, uh, they they were absolutely wonderful. There's a lot of production down there, so you got a lot of heavy hitters in the production community. But with the diet you're on now, though, man, what the hell do you eat in New Orleans? Such great food there. It's all meat there, man. I know. Um, But I was all veganed out. Mercifully, they got Beyond Burgers there as well. So every day I had like Beyond Burger. It was very easy. Like every other movie I think I'd made. Like I was not uh, vegan. So yeah, you know, yeah. at that point you're just constantly grazing and eating. Yeah. But I learned on the movie prior to this that like just stay away from like the snack bar and stay on your feet. Like never sit. Mm-hmm. If you stand mm-hmm. on a movie set all day, you get in ten thousand steps, no problem. Yeah. So you no. lost how much weight from after the eighteen well, years ago? When, weight, the last time you played uh, Silent Bob. Oh, look, good lord. Well, when I played Silent Bob like in two thousand and one, yeah. I would I would have to say easily two eighty. So at does, that point. So and my, but my high point was, well, at one point I weighed my area code, 323. <laughs> and wow. then I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? Let's even it up. And I took it to 330. So my <laughs> top right. weight yeah. <laughs> felt weird. Yeah. Yeah. Top weight was 330. Then yeah. I watched the sugar doc a couple years ago, Fed Up, I think it was called. Right. And I lost uh, a bunch of weight, got me down to, like I went down, but then I was up when I had the heart attack. About 270, 275. Mm. So now I'm 195, which is like, that's what I weighed when I left high school. That's my high school. So how do you explain in uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot 
that Silent Bob lost a ton of weight. Did he, he get we, gastric bypass or something? <laughs> or? Jay says that at one point, Jay monologues about how he went vegan. Jay mocks him for being vegan the whole uh, time. Oh, so nice. All what used to be the fat jokes are now vegan jokes. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I was wondering yeah, how that would that be works. addressed. There yeah. was, there's a moment in the movie where uh, we're at the airport trying to leave, uh, you know, because the whole movie is a repeat of the last movie where, like, the first movie was Jay and Silent Bob find out that Hollywood's making a movie about him, so they go to Hollywood to stop it. And this movie is Jay and Silent Bob find out Hollywood's making a reboot of that old movie, so yeah. they just go back to stop it again. So at one point, instead of trying to take a bus, we tried to take a plane, and we went to the airport. And um, uh, um, oh, Molly Shannon is uh, the woman at the terminal. Oh, I love it's, her. It's, she's so amazing. She's so good. And it's South. The South Worst Airlines or something. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they say like, "Oh, that we can't let you uh, fly because there's a weight problem." And then you know, mm -hmm. Jay and Silent Bob go wide eyed, and Jay's like, "Weight problem? Don't you see that Silent Bob lost a bunch of weight, lady? <laughs> like you know, he went all vegan." And, yeah, and so she's like, "No, I didn't say weight problem. I said weight problem." She turns the screen. It says weight problem. <laughs> 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 and Perfect. the problem is they can't get That's on the plane funny. because in 2001. They flew around and beat up people after yeah. that movie. Yeah. And they have connections to a, a terrorist organization called the, I don't know, can you say it on the air? C L I T. Yeah, dude. It's well, an okay. acronym. Um, so, it, yeah. It's, oh, it's, I'll have to look that up. Fun no. little callback. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Can I just say, I mean, the very first one was my, it means a lot to me because I was interning in radio when I came out and mm. when I was going house to house, like, crashing out friends uh, places and i kept the movie in my bag oh, so i've watched man. it like a hundred times was your comfort blanket dude i'm telling you <laughs> what it, what you just referenced right now is like one of the funniest pieces of cinematic history of life that oh, babe. i am the oh, so you sweet. Are, yeah. Yeah. You, i'm telling yeah. you you will love the movie if you yeah. if you loved jane son bob shrug bag it's an absolute uh, love fest but more more than just like it's definitely a sequel to jane son yeah. bob shrug bag but i got to put in a sequel to clerks there's a sequel mm -hmm. to Mallrats because Jason Lee has a big scene with Brody. There's mm -hmm. this eight-minute sequel to Chasing Amy because Ben came back and so did Joey. And uh, Matt came back, so he comes back as Loki. So there's a dog oh, in the sequel wow. stuck in there. It's essentially Those sequelizes. must all be favors because you said you had $10 million bucks and you just listed off all these yeah. like, Total very favors. expensive Oh, my Lord. Yeah. People, yeah. Nobody yeah. got paid. Like Everyone got paid scale and stuff. I don't yeah. even think mm -hmm. Jason made more than scale to be the lead. But casting the movie was a breeze post heart attack man because you call up people mm -hmm. and be like hey man you want to come uh, down to yeah. new orleans mm -hmm. and be in the movie they'd be like i don't know dude new orleans is kind of far and you'd be like you do remember i almost died yeah. last year right <laughs> and they're like all right i'm coming i'm coming yeah. man so, so we wound up with a pretty wonderful cast it also helps when you tell mm -hmm. people we're shooting in new orleans during mardi gras yeah because then you get people, people together anyway you're yeah. me a free trip to mardi gras right, and you're right, gonna right. put yeah. me up i'm there yeah so here's my question because the film is going to be in theaters on october 15th and 17th only what the hell does that mean that's a fathom event screening where okay. uh, basically it's in every multiplex anywhere that do the fathom event screening yeah then jay and i go out on tour with the movie as of october 19th for 62 dates where we accompany the movie like a concert Okay. So the first cool. two dates is so for everybody who's like, I don't want to pay 50 bucks to watch your movie just because you and Jay are with it. I just want to see a movie. Those Fathom Events dates are beautiful. If you go to one of them, you get a sweet ass poster. If you go to the other, it's a double feature of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. So that covers people who are like, I just want to see the movie. Then we start our tour because that tour goes to pay back our equity investors on the movie. 62 dates will probably, uh, it will definitely pay off what we like Saban is one of the fin financiers universal has it but overseas. couldn't you make all that money just by putting it in theaters no because what a great question you could if you had an additional 20 million just to put it in theaters here's oh, really? a little movie yeah, math yeah. for folks listening uh budget of this movie is 10 million dollars that is just literally making a movie now right. if i want to put that movie into movie theaters like say long shot the seth rogan movie that just came out mm -hmm. uh, i'd pay minimum minimum $20 million in marketing costs on top of the $10 million. That's all your TV spots, all your mm -hmm. uh, billboards, all your everything that makes you aware of a movie coming out in theaters. When you say, like, can't you just put it in theaters? You can. You need $20 million to do it. Unless you're doing an art house release, in which case you need probably $3 million to do hmm. it. Still, that's money on top of money. I was lucky to get the $10 million to make the movie. Where the hell am I going to find $20 million just sense. to sell the movie? Yeah, yeah that so makes sense. my thing is, like, me man, and Jay scrappy, go man. everywhere in the world mm -hmm sit there and talk to each other about the old movies and people pay us 50 to 100 bucks 
I'm like, if we bring them a new movie, it's even better. It's more, yeah. more value. So yeah. we knew that part of the tour was going to pay off our equity investors. So Saban Films has half, Universal has half, but then there's money still got to fill in the gap, right? And that was the equity investors cats. Those are the people that put real money into a movie. Saban gets the movie forever, right? So that's what they get for their money. Universal gets the movie forever overseas, and that's what they get for their money. The equity investors just put money in gambling. Like, man, I hope this is going to mm -hmm. pan out. Wow. And usually those are the people that kind of get screwed over, don't make their money back when movies fail. So in my world, since like I'm real hand to mouth and I'm reaching out to other people for money and stuff, you got to make sure that those cats get paid back. So this tour pays back our equity investors one year from the moment we started shooting, which is unheard of. That's you cool. You never wow. really get mm -hmm. paid back, but if you do, it's usually about five years. So yeah. I can do that. Jeez. That means the next movie way easier to make because we've paid those people back and we've already sold out over half the tour we started adding oh my god there's tons nice. of sold yeah. out dates yeah, on yeah, that it's, yeah. It, we're, it's fortunate but it's like it yeah, is where, kind where of believe me i would love to just like it's everywhere look at that billboard right. mm -hmm. but that costs money so where can people find the list of all the dates and the places go to rebootroadshow.com right. for all the dates in their town and when the movie when jay and i say we go to detroit and we show the movie in detroit when we leave Detroit, then it opens in the Detroit area as well. So there's oh, like three different okay. ways to catch a movie. It's kind of like a platform release, but oh, that's the cool. Fathom Events thing allows people who are like, dude, I don't want bells and whistles. I just want to see a movie. Like, right. you're like, can I just go mm -hmm. see it? Yeah. This is how everybody can see it where it don't cost us an arm and a leg. Awesome. That's pretty, you know, that's the interesting yeah. stuff that so I'm always fascinated yeah. by. I never think of that. Because, yeah, you never hear about how the, a lot of sense. Making how a movie the sausage is, hard, is made. Right. Selling a movie yeah. is expensive. And this like, is an experience, yeah. too. Yeah. And yet, Rules, that's the other yeah. thing, too. It's like, and I learned that from Eddie Izzard, man. I remember I watched my first Eddie Izzard show, and I'm like, this is just stand up comedy. But he's doing mm -hmm. it in a theater, yeah. and he's got an outfit on, and people are paying like 100 bucks. But literally, this is just what you would do at a comedy club. It's about presentation. Mm -hmm. You make it an experience. Uh -huh. So for me, I'm like, well, I can just put the movie out there. But what makes it an experience is if we're there, we intro it, we watch it with the audience. Yeah. And then afterwards, we're like sitting there and talking to them and stuff. Are you going to be so sick of your own movie by date uh, 62? Yeah. You would think, but but this is my <laughs> feeling on it. And you're going to be am, so high I'll, the I'll, entire I'll, time. You kind of have to eat okay. my words. But like, I, you know, when you're a filmmaker, you desperately want to make the movie. It took me two and a half years to make this. And I almost died in the process doing that with the heart attack. So I wanted to make this movie more than anything in the world. When you release a movie, if you're the Avengers, you get a month at the box office, and that's it, like a month. Um, if you're Kevin Smith, you get a day. You don't even get a weekend before it's all over. And you spend most of that weekend going like, oh, man, it's not making as much money as somebody else wants it to. And then you're not having a good time. Then everything you work to do is lost because you're thinking yeah. about all this other mm -hmm. nonsense. Yeah. And then it's over in a weekend. With this way, I could spread this experience out. I'm going to be enjoying this movie for six months. I'm going to keep this movie in theaters and keep it alive and keep it part of the cinematic conversation for six months. And I get to watch it every night, with sometimes three times a night, with an audience that's like, this is my religion. Like, I was born to see this movie. It's an audience full of yeah. them. Like it's going that's to be kind of scary. It's good. No, <laughs> it's, it's going to be like medicines. a warm bath every yeah, night, yeah. man. And it's going to be like a like yeah. a victory lap, yeah. like post heart attack. Yeah. Where it's like, I'm alive and I made yeah. this movie. Mm -hmm. And even if the movie sucked, no one's going to say anything because I almost died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're going to be like, let him go on this one. This is a heart attack movie. But the good <laughs> news yeah. is the movie rocks. <laughs>